Okay. Well, we've reached half past, so um, so I'm going to kick things off. Uh, we are expecting more delegates to come in, but I, I think uh, because we're quite short on time today, um, I think we'll, uh, we'll 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 start now. Um, so, uh, welcome everybody, and uh, thanks very much for joining us for this um, this short uh, lunch and learn session uh, with CPH2 today, and uh, in, in in line with the Humber branch of the EMT Institute. Uh, my name is David Talbot. I'm the uh, Chief Exec of uh, CATCH, which is an industrial membership and uh, skills organisation based in the Humber region. But I'm also chair of the Humber branch of the of the Energy Institute. Uh, so a formal welcome from, from myself. Uh, this is the, uh, the third webinar uh, from the Humber branch since the lockdown started. And it's part of a series uh, that looks at decarbonisation uh, in the round uh, in, in an area, uh, the Humber Bank, uh, that is the highest carbon emissions in the UK, as I'm sure that all delegates on this uh, this webinar are aware. There's a huge amount of work going on uh, within the region, including some exciting deployment projects as part of the uh, Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund, uh, Industrial Decarbonisation Challenge. And CATCH itself uh, is working alongside the Humble Lab uh, and has a bid in for with Innovate UK uh, to develop a, a cluster plan to highlight how the region is going to get to net zero by 2040. So today, uh, I'm pleased to, to introduce uh, Kamal uh, Khan from CPH2. They'll take us through their, their uh, hydrogen journey uh, and what they are doing in the sector. Uh, Kamal will also uh, be bringing in his uh, colleague uh, Ian Pillay uh, for the Q&A session uh, at the end. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Kamal. So uh, before we start, the usual ground rules apply. Uh, you will be muted uh, and on video, uh, sorry, video off. Um, if you wish to ask a question, uh, please do so in the, the Q&A uh, section, uh, as I'm sure you're used to from, from other webinars. Time is very tight, uh, as this is a short lunch and learn, as I mentioned before. Um, so I may not be able to get around to everyone's questions, but we will try and answer them after the webinar. Um, um, it, the, the questions will be collated and, and sent to, uh, to CPH2 and myself. So uh, we'll try and get back to you with those questions afterwards if we can't get around to all of the uh, questions um, um, after, after the presentation. Um, I may run over a little bit uh, if we've got a good conversation going, but I do want to shut it off at, at, at the half hour point if we can. So talking about lack of time, um, I will uh, not take up any more time and hand you straight over to Kamar who will take you through their uh, presentation. Oh, and just one final thing from me, this will be recorded um, uh, and uh, we will hope to get that uh, recording out onto social media um, after the after the, uh, the uh, this event. So thanks very much for joining us and I'll hand over to Kamar. Thank you, Kamar. Yeah, thank you, David. And thank you for everyone taking the time out and joining us for this webinar. So I'll quickly start by introducing myself. Um, as David said, my name is Kumar. I've been with the company for seven months and I'm part of the business development team. Um, as, as David also alluded to, uh, Ian will be joining us um, for the Q&A, who's the technical uh, development director of Clean Power Hydrogen. Um, so uh, it being my first webinar, if I fluff my lines, I apologize. So I'll, I'll say that in advance. So I'll, um, I'll start the presentation then. Uh, I'll, going okay so i want to quickly give you guys an overview of the presentation um, i'll start with a quick introduction and then i'll give a, a high level overview of the projects um, that have that have begun decarbonizing the industrial cluster i will also touch on um, uh, pilot projects which could assist decarbonizing other sectors but then i'll move on to talking about the two common methods of producing uh, hydrogen and then a little bit about our technology and how we fit in and then uh, followed by some reading questions so um the presentation won't take too long i intend to finish within the next 15 minutes so if i if i go slightly over i apologize if i've made everyone's lunch so um let's let's go with the introduction so we're all aware of uh, the hydrogen over the past 12 to 18 months hydrogen has gone from being a potential solution um, to be in the front and centre of decarbonisation policies and plans across, across the globe. Hydrogen, as we're aware, could contribute billions to the UK economy and generate thousands of jobs. The Humber, um, being one of the largest of the six industrial clusters um, in the UK, 
um, decarbonization in this region is vital, not just for um, uh, the net zero target, but also for the future of the Humber. And, and, and the good thing about the Humber is ideally placed to develop, test and roll out renewable innovations. Um, the, the Humber region is packed with energy intensive industries such as refineries, uh, power stations, steel works, glass industries and ports. So rather than going through the individual industries, I group them all together uh, into sectors and, um, and I'll talk about the individual sectors or projects that are um, ongoing in that sector or related opportunities which could assist the Humber in reaching the net zero target. So I'll talk about energy and renewables, chemical, ports and logistics, manufacturing and engineering, and food and drink. So let's start with uh, energy and renewables. Um, it's, the, the sectors of the energy and renewable sector, um, the, the areas clusters, the energy estuary, um, it's leading the UK renewable sector with investment in wind, biofuels and renewable energy. Uh, the project that's ongoing uh, is the Gigastack project. Um, as I say, I'll give you a high level overview, I won't go into detail. The purpose of the project is to show how renewable hydrogen derived from offshore wind can support the UK's net zero target. Um, the electrolysis will be in the form of uh, producing hydrogen and then the end user will be Philip 66. Then uh, in the chemical sector, we have uh, the hydrogen to Humber Salt 10 project. Uh, Equinor is leading the project to develop the UK's first, and I believe the, the world's first at scale facility to produce a hydrogen from natural gas in combination with carbon capture and storage, CCS. So if you do want further information, I've uh, included the links below. Um, but what is it for now? For, for, for the purpose of this presentation, I, I won't go into detail. Um, and then if we go across to the next three sectors, are we talking about pilot projects that are happening in Europe, which could support the Humber further in decarbonizing uh, the, these individual sectors? So we have ports and logistics. Uh, the ports, um, the Humber ports handle up to 77 million tons um, uh, per, uh, annually and contribute 2.5 billion to the UK economy. So decarbonization is quite critical as well. So the project that was of interest that could relate to the Humber ports is the H2 port. Um, this project will be demonstrated and validated at the port of Valencia, where a reach stacker, which is this vehicle here, and the yard tractor will both be converted to run on hydrogen. Uh, the project will run for a, a period of two years. Um, there's also other vehicles that I've added in here, which could potentially be converted. So you have the container handler, the forklift truck, and also the RTG crane, which all could be converted to run on hydrogen to support the decarbonization of ports. Next, we have uh, manufacturing and engineering. That we're aware the Humber is a home to advanced engineering and many uh, international companies um, which operate in various sectors. Um, the region is also has a specialist manufacturing such as the steel industry. So the project that I came across, which I thought might be of interest for the sector, is the Hybrid project. Uh, Hybrid is short for Hydrogen Breakthrough Iron Making Technology. Um, the purpose of the project is really to develop uh, a steel production process that uses hydrogen instead of coal and coke. So that allows direct reduction of CO2. Uh, the image on the right shows you the two different uh, versions. So you've got the hybrid version on the right hand side. And also you can see the difference in the in the furnace design as well. The furnace is a direct reduction process and the hydrogen will come from a renewable resource. Once again, if you want further details and information, I've included the links below. And, and finally, um, the food and drink sector, uh, the Humber is classed as Britain's kitchen. So because it's got the most concentration uh, of food manufacturing, research, storage facilities in Europe, and also contributes around about 2 billion to the UK economy. So once again, decarbonization of this sector is as important as the other sectors as well. Um, so the project is more closer to home. It's called High Spirits, where they're exploring uh, of the potential of converting um, 
a gin distillery in Scotland uh, from using uh, petrol gas, petroleum gas to hydrogen. It's also part of uh, a 390 million government investments for reducing emissions in this industry. So, uh, as I said, if, if you require further details, I'll add the links below. Uh, so, all the projects above uh, give examples of ongoing hydrogen projects or potential projects to decarbonize sectors within the industry. And they all have one thing in common where they will need hydrogen. So, there are two common methods of producing hydrogen, which which is which I will touch on now. Um, you have uh, SMR or steam methane reforming and electrolysis. Um, SMR is a catalytic process, and most of the hydrogen today is produced uh, through this method. And then you have electrolysis, where uh, you, you use electricity electricity to break down water into hydrogen and oxygen. Um, there are various electrolysis technologies out there, so you have the the alkaline electrolysis, you have protein exchange membrane electrolysis, which is PEM, and then you have solid oxide. And now add to the mix, we have our technology, which is the membrane-free electrolyzer. So from the next few slides, I'll talk about our technology and how it differs. So our technology is an alternative solution to the existing PEM and membrane brace electrolyzers. Our technology includes uh, an MFE or a, um, a membrane free electrolyzer in combination with cryogenic separation to deliver pure hydrogen and pure oxygen as separate gases. Um, the cryogenic system gives us the advantage in the production of liquid hydrogen and oxygen for storage and transportation. The advantages of our uh, technology is that. It's simple, it's quick to build with short delivery times. It's simple to operate, it's simple to maintain. Also, the system has three stages which are all daisy chained together. So you have electrolysis, drying, and cryogenics. Um, it's safe, so there's no membrane to degrade or fail. Um, it's sustainable because 98% uh, 90, of the components used are recyclable and reusable, and there's no rare. Uh, platinum group metals used in our stack. It's scalable because of the modular design where we can scale up or down, so from a sub one megawatt to multi gigawatt systems. And then if we compare it to the other technologies as well, as I mentioned earlier, there's three methods of producing um, hydrogen from water electrolysis. You have a, a PEM, you have alkaline and solid oxide. However, it is the polymer membrane and the precious, uh, precious metal catalyst used in the technologies which cause limitations such as high cost, low reliability, low efficiency, and lack of scalability. Whereas our technology, we don't use a polymer membrane, so the need for a catalyst is eliminated. Also, if you look at the cell, cell structure on the right hand side, there's literally three components, two plates and a gasket separating the two plates. From a safety perspective, um, we have um, our system produces mixed gases, so which is separated cryogenically after the electro electrolyzer. So we have designed our system to deal with mixed gases. So there's several layers of safety. There's a uh, mechanical safety and there's electronic safety as well. And then we have a, a PLC system, a safe PLC system. Also we have redundant safety. Uh, so there's various levels of safety to, uh, to, to make sure that uh, the, the user and the asset is safe. Also we've had external engagement uh, from various parties to validate to ensure that our system meets the safety criteria. Currently, we're offering these models. Um, so we've got um, MFE 2 or 2 to the MFE 440. Um, so the MFE 2 and the MFE 30 both come in 24 containers. The MFE 220 and the MFE 40 both come in 44 containers. And you can see from the images that the nature of our design is compact, 
Um, hence the reason we can pack so much into it. Um, and and here are the, the production of uh, hydrogen. So the MFeO2 can produce up to 4.5 kilograms of hydrogen per day, and uh, all the way up to 440, which can produce up to 902 kilograms of hydrogen per day. We're not only restricted to those models. Uh, this graph, I think, shows quite nicely uh, that our technology is scalable to meet the customer's requirements. So we're offering uh, it's offering a, a flexible uh, solution to meet the customer's needs. Um, because our techni technology is uh, unique, it's protected by a number of patents um, throughout the world. So we've got 22 patents um, worldwide and two pending. And and to and and to and to lead on from that, not just you know, how we've got um, global patents, we've also got projects and inquiries and opportunities on a global scale as well. So we we plans for potentially looking at manufacturing assembly plants in the UK, Ireland, Australasia, North and South Africa, which we hope to be online uh, next year and beyond. Um, the projects we're in, involved in range from water treatment all the way to uh, hydrogen fuel uh, fuel trucks. Uh, so it, it, it's a range of applications and projects we're involved in. Um, so so yeah, we as I say, as we as we grow, as as our opportunities increase, um, our 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 capabilities and our uh, and, and our and our container sizes and everything will increase the suit. Um, so yeah, uh, just to summarize, um, our membrane-free electrolyzer is simple, safe, sustainable, scalable. Um, our MFE electrolyzer does not use a polymer membrane, so there's, there's no need for a catalyst. Um, also, we use cryogenic separation to deliver pure hydrogen and oxygen as separate gases. So that brings me to the end of the presentation. Um, so please get in touch and follow us on and my contact details are given below. So I um, just want to say thank you for listening and bearing with me. Um, I stumbled anywhere. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to present. Okay, that's uh, that's great. Thanks ever so much, Kamal. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, I think, um, and I'd like to bring uh, Ian in as well now. Um, so we'll we'll move on to uh, to a Q and A session. Uh, and uh, as I said before, if we don't get round to all the questions in time, then then we will pass them on to uh, to Kumar, uh, and um, we we will try and get those answered for you. So um, I think, can I just kick off actually? First of all, um, and I suppose in simple terms. Um, how does the membrane um, how does the membrane free um, electrolyzer actually work? Is is there a simple uh, kind of um, thirty second answer to that one? I don't know yeah, that one. Yeah, it's uh, it it works from simply turning it on to turning it off on the control system. Okay, <laughs> uh, that that is a simple thirty second answer to the uh, to the question. <laughs> Is there any any more at all on that one? No, that's, it, that's how it's. Uh, we've we've spent a lot of time uh, making the user interface on the HMI uh, and the uh, client control side uh, really simple. So so there's there's very very little that that you actually need to do or or in, engage with uh, while the electrolysis is in operation. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so it's, it's been designed that way just to be simple, literally simply turn it on or off depending okay. on what you want to do. And I assume that the rest of it is um, is, is 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 your kind of uh, IPR effectively. So you wouldn't want to go into too much detail. Yeah, correct. Yeah, uh, understood. Yeah. Okay. So uh, question from uh, uh, from Peter Nicholson. Um, whilst hydrogen is the primary product, what do you see as the potential for using the secondary product uh, product of oxygen? Okay, well, that's a good question. Um, there's several projects we're working on. Uh, where, where actually they've been for oxygen play rather than hydrogen play. Uh, these can be anything from uh, water enhancement to uh, medical grade oxygen for the NHS. 
Okay, I suppose um, linked to that. Uh, sorry, just another one from me. Um, are there any specific sectors that you're looking at for your for the for the hydrogen product, or is it something that could be used right across the board? I mean, you know, Kamar mentioned all the different sectors. Is there any specialist kind of uh, sector or area that you're looking at for your product? Uh, no, at the, at the moment it's uh, it's across the board. Um, obviously, uh, every uh, project has its own uh, unique characteristics, um, and we can we can match those uh, readily with the uh, MFE design because it's very modular. Um, but again, it's, we're not targeting any one real um, industry per se. Um, it's just that we can make um, uh, very pure hydrogen. With with a system using uh, without using membranes. Okay. Uh, one one question here from Paul Walker. Um, um, he's asked how much power is required to operate the equipment. Uh, well, again, that all depends on the size of the system uh, that's being employed. Um, but we're typically around. Well, we're typically between um, thirty nine. Uh, kilowatt hours per kilogram to 54 kilowatt hours per kilogram. Okay, thank you. Um, so there are a few questions coming in now. So uh, there's one from Luke Tan. Um, what electrolyzers um, do you have as references and to what scale have you deployed? Okay, um, that one we can't talk about at the moment, but we have deployed one electrolyzer. Um, and, and again, uh, you'll have to just keep an eye on our socials for for that project as it develops uh, at the moment. Sure, and I, I think uh, people will be uh, after today, um, certainly uh, referring to your social media. Um, okay, so one from David Hurst. Um, is the gas storage, uh, hydrogen, oxygen, outside of the container unit? Mm, no, um, okay. separate, yes. Uh, but mm. the way it's, it's okay. generated, it's, it's gen generated internally, uh, and then okay. from the cryogenic system, it's separate gases. Okay. There's a few co uh, questions coming in about uh, cost and price, and I, I don't think it's probably relevant to ask those at the moment. Um, there's one from uh, Peter Mickelson. Uh, what are the water quality requirements? Uh, water quality requirements are just normal potable water. Uh, we have um, onboard uh, water filtration and treatment, uh, which isn't reverse osmosis, so you're not losing uh, water. Um, the, the system is very tolerant to um, um, poor water qualities, if that's the way to describe okay. it. You say it is tolerant to poor water? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, you don't need ultra pure water to run the electrolyzer like PEM systems. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. There's a qu another question from Peter Mickelson. Uh, have you included any facilities for providing uh, demand side uh, response, e.g., in response to frequency? Sorry, can you repeat that question? Sorry. Yep. Uh, ha have you included any facilities for providing demand side re response? E.g., in response to frequency. As uh, in power profile. Yes, I assume so. Yeah, yeah. If it's, if it's if it's relating to the power profiles, then yeah, we have no issues with that uh, response times milliseconds okay. um, to to a power profile being put into the system. Okay. Thanks. Um, could seawater be used in the system in offshore industries? That's from Liam Jackson. Uh, on on that one, at the moment, we wouldn't. We you would we would still want to put the seawater through some form of filter to take out the the salt, yeah. the chlorine ions, uh, in the system. Um, so on 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 the that basis, the answer would be no. But again, we've looked at projects offshore where they're taking seawater and they're doing the uh, reverse osmosis to provide us with just potable water. Sure. Okay. Okay, um, just looking through still. Um, again, I'm not sure if how much you'll be able to answer this one, but uh, from Liam Jackson, uh, how many of these units are currently in use, and roughly where and what industries? We've kind of kind of covered that a bit. 
But is there anything else you can yeah. say at all, Ian or Kamar, about that? Well, I, I, on that one, I'll just say just keep an eye on the socials for that one. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a few things going on. Sure. We just uh, we, we would like to shout them from the top of the roof at the moment, but uh, I think Samantha would tell me off if I did. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. I thought that might be your uh, your response there. Okay, um, just having a look if there's anybody else. Sorry, just bear with me a second. Uh, I think that's pretty well all of the questions. I say I've tried to stay away from any price questions. Um, yeah, I think there's, there's one I've just seen, David, that, yep. that I would like to answer, and that's okay. from Sarah. Um, she's asked about the target cost of two pounds per kilogram by 2030, mm. um, and she's asking if is this with reach with your in your opinion? I, I think it is. We've got some independent studies done, um, and we're currently at sort of. Uh, maybe sort of three, three and a half pounds per kilogram um, for hydrogen. So I think it's well, well, well feasible to, to have that target across the industry as well uh, by 2030. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you've seen any more there, Ian or Kamar, that you think you are able to answer. I think we've covered most things. Yeah, no, I think so. I think we've covered most of those. So off if, if, if anybody's got any other questions, that's fine. Just to, to to email us directly. So, okay. And I think that's really uh, perfect timing to to kind of round things off. I don't know, Kamar, if you can put the uh, the presentation back on just for the. There should be a couple of slides on the back end. Yeah. Just to, to round. I probably close it down quicker than I should. Okay, no worries. Um, no worries at all. There you go. So. Yeah, so from myself, thank you ever so much to everyone for dialing in. And really importantly, thanks to Kamar and Ian uh, and the team at CPH2 for, um, for, for offering to, uh, to deliver this presentation. It's very quick lunch and learn. As, as we said, it was only ever going to be a sound bite. Um, so thanks very much, everybody, for, for taking part today. Um, just very quickly, for those of you uh, who are members of the Energy Institute, um, please keep in touch with the Humber branch. We've got a lot going on. Um, we've we've uh, um, re-enthused our, our events calendar, uh, and, and this is just one of, of, of a series of events, uh, specifically in, uh, around uh, industrial decarbonisation, but a lot wider as well. Um, so please keep in touch with us through the website um, and also through social media. For those who aren't members of the Energy Institute uh, at the moment, uh, please have a look at the EI website uh, or contact myself or, um, or, or, or um, contact info at energyinst.org, info at energyinst.org, um, or as I say, contact myself. And um, just a final plug um, to highlight a resource uh, that's available on the EI website um, around hydrogen, a guide to hydrogen, essential guide to hydrogen. So it's there, have a look, you can Google it, you've got the um, URL there. So to round off, uh, great session, thanks ever so much, uh, Kamar and Ian. Thanks to all the delegates for attending. Um, and um, I look forward to the next uh, Humber Branch um, event, uh, which will be happening probably in, just into the new year. So keep an eye out. Thanks ever so much, everyone. And I'll draw things to a close Bye. now. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.